Hi everyone, I'm Miss Harrington. I'm Mr Flynn. And we're going to be talking to you about djembe drums. Let's see some of them being played now. sound like when they're being played do you think you know which part of this map is Africa well done Africa is the yellow continent at the bottom can you name any of the other continents on this map There are five other continents than Africa on this map. North America, South America, Europe, Asia and Australasia. Did you get them all right? The continent of Africa is massive. As you can see, it's split into North, South, East and West, as well as a central area. You've narrowed it down to Africa, but can you tell me which part of Africa you think a djembe comes from? Well done if you said West Africa. West Africa is still pretty big, so we need to be narrowing it down even further. Here you can see lots of different countries within the West African area. Which two do you think are responsible for the highest production of djembe's? Well done if you said Mali and Ghana. Excellent work, guys. You are now going to watch a video all about the sounds of Africa. Watch closely and see if you can see how all of these sounds are being created. <laughs> Thank you. 
Because Africa is such a big place, there are lots of different languages spoke within it. Here are just a few of the different languages that you can hear within Africa. You might have noticed the word Swahili on the picture above. We're now going to teach you some Swahili words to see if you can use them around the house at home. We're going to go through five words that you can use around the home and when we come into your school to do your African drum lessons in person. We can't wait to do that. The first word that you could use for us or for anybody that you see today is Jambo. Jambo means hello. I'll go first and then after a three count in, your turn. Jambo! Are you ready? One, two, three, Jambo! Well done. The second word is Karibu. Karibu means welcome. You would use this word if you were welcoming somebody into your home. So I'll say it first, then after three, it's your guys' turn. Karibu. Now you guys, one, two, three. Fantastic, well done. The third word that we're gonna learn today is Rafiki. Again, something that you could say to people around your home or any of your friends when you chat to them. Rafiki means friend. And you might recognize this word from the well-known film, The Lion King. My turn, Rafiki. You. One, two, three. Excellent. The fourth word is goma. Goma means drum. Goma is an especially tricky word because it has a silent N at the beginning. So I'll say it first and then you guys say it. Goma. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Brilliant. Well done. Our final word for today is cuchesa. Cuchesa means to play. Now cuchesa is quite a hard word to get your mouth around. So we're going to split this word up. I'll do it slowly in syllables, cuchesa, and then I'll hand it over to Mr. Flynn to go through it with you a little faster. So, my turn, cuchesa. Are you ready? Nice and slow. One, two, three. Excellent. Brilliant. Let's see if we can do it a little bit faster now. So I'll go first, and then on the count of three, it's your guys' turn. Cuchesa. Ready? One, two, three. Brilliant. Can we try that again? Cuchesa. And again, one, two, three. Fantastic. Well done, guys. Right, let's have a look at a djembe drum. So I've got my one here. My one's quite big. They come in all different sizes, though. You can get really small ones or you can get really, really big ones. Now, djembe drums are made from one block of wood. So we can see here there's nothing glued together. This was cut from a tree and then hollowed out. So you can see at the bottom here, there's a massive hole in it. Now the reason the hole's in it is because that's actually where the sound comes from. If I tap my dembre drum at the top, it goes straight through the drum, straight out of the hole. So that's why you would never see anybody sitting down with their drum on the floor, because that will block the hole, and therefore the sound that comes out wouldn't sound as good. Now we've also got some black rope coming down all across here and all across here as well. The reason we have this is so that it tightens this part to make the sounds that I just played there my drum. Now a couple more things, depending on where you hit the djembe drum at the top, changes the sound that it makes. So for example, if I use the palm of my hand and I tapped it in the middle here, it would make more of a bass low sound. Whereas if I used my fingers and I tapped around the edge of the drum, it would make a higher slap sound. So you could fuse those two together, so sometimes when you hit it, it's going to be bassy and low, sometimes when you hit it, it's going to be high and slapped. Now we're going to watch a video all about how djembe's are made, from being a tree to the finished djembe drum.
The first worksheet that you have is all about filling in the blanks. You'll see a picture of a djembe, but can you name which part is which? Use the words at the bottom to fill in the gaps.
You might remember just before the worksheet, Mr. Flynn taught you a little bit about how to play some different sounds on the djembe drum. He's now going to teach us about three separate sounds, a bass, a tone and a slap. Mr. Flynn's going to play them and I'm going to join along and you're going to be my team. Can you join along clapping, tapping the desks or tapping your legs? Perfect. Mr. Flynn. So the first one we're going to do is the bass, which I mentioned before. The bass one is the most common one and it's the easiest one to do. So what I want you to do is, is I just want you to hold your palm out like this. We use the middle of our palms for our bass hit and we hit our drum right in the centre. This is the lowest and the bassiest sound you can do. So miss, I'm going to play and then can you copy me? Of course. Perfect. Can you copy at home as well? We can also use two hands. Fantastic. So that's our bass hit. The second hit we're going to do, which is what I also talked about, was the slap hit. Now this is my personal favourite because of the sound it makes. We get our fingers and we actually hit the drums with the ridge of our fingers like this and we're going to hit right around the outer edge. Now if you do this too hard, you are going to hurt your fingers. Okay. okay. So you need to be quite light with it. But when I do this, miss, if you copy me, it's going to sound like this. Two hands already? Okay. I think it sounds better with two hands. If you're joining in at home, let's try it a little bit more. That's a pretty hard one. That was fast, wasn't it? It was fast. I struggled. Can you hear the difference between a bass and a slap? There's an absolute clear difference there. So the last one I'm going to teach you, which is, I think, the hardest one. It's the hardest one to get right, Miss. Okay. It's called a tone hit. And the reason it's really hard to get right is that we need to cup our hands. So what I like to say is like, imagine you're drinking from a water fountain and you cup your hands like this and you drink like that. Now I want everybody to do this with their hands like they're drinking out of a water fountain and then just take that one hand away without moving it at all. We can kind of see it's a little bit cupped, okay? So what we need to do to get a tone hit is keep our hand like this. We're not gonna hit the middle of the drum. We're not gonna hit the outside. We're gonna hit the bit in the, just around there like that, okay? So not in the middle, just outside there. So let's give it a go, Miss. Are you ready? Yes. Let's try two hands. So that's quite hard. And the bigger your drum is, the better your tone will sound because you've got more space for it to resonate through the drums. If you've got a really small one, it's really difficult to get that tone sound. Do you think we're ready for a challenge? Mr. Flynn is going to do a sequence of different hits and we're going to see if we can keep up with him. Right, here we go. It's going to be a mix of bass, tones and slaps. So remember, your bass is the palm of your hand in the middle, your slaps are your fingers around the outside, and your tone is your cupped hand around the edge of the drum. Here we go. Are you ready, miss? Ready. Are you ready? Let's go. So, let's start with bass, bass, slap, slap. Bass, bass, slap, slap. Slap, slap, bass, bass. Slap, slap, bass, bass. We're going to use two hands now. Bass, 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 slap, slap. Okay, Just a, a bit, bit Mr. Faster. Flynn. So, bass, bass, tone, slap. Bass, bass, tone, slap. Bass, bass, tone, slap. Bass, bass, tone, slap. Slap, slap, slap. Bass, bass, bass. 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 Tone, 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 bass. Slap. 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 Fantastic. If you followed that at home, I'm really impressed. Well done everyone. Hope your hands, desk and knees are okay after that clapping session or drumming session. Well done, we think you did excellently. You're now going to see a video of somebody doing what we've just done but as a solo. Do you think you can pick out a bass in the middle, a tone on the edge and a slap on the rim? How many sounds can you pick out?
Lynn's just been through with you how to do a bass, a tone and a slap sound on a djembe drum. We're now going to speak to you about call and response. So call and response basically means I'm going to call something and Miss Harrington here is going to respond to it. She's not going to copy what I'm playing on my drums. She's going to do something different. So Miss Harrington, on my drum, I'm going to say, we play the djembe's. Okay. And I want you to respond with, we play the drums. Got it. Okay? Yeah. So let's just try it really quickly, me and you here. So if I say, we play the djembe, you would say? We play the drums. Perfect, like that. So I'm going to use my djembe now, and Miss Harrington's going to use hers, and we're going to do it together. So, we play the djembe. We play the drums. We play the djembe. We play the drums. It's that easy. Let's see if you can join in while me and Miss Harrington are doing it. So, we play the djembe. We play the drums. We play the djembe. We play the drums. Fantastic. Let's try another one. So this time, Miss Harrington, I'm going to say, we love djembe. Okay. And what I want you to do is I want you to respond with djembe drum, djembe drum. Okay? Yes. Did you get that? So when I say, we love djembe, you're going to respond with djembe drum, djembe drum. Let's give it a go. We love djembe. Djembe drums, djembe drums. We love djembe. Djembe drums, djembe drums. Perfect. Let's see if you guys can join in. And we love djembe. Djembe drums, djembe drums. We love djembe. Djembe drums, djembe drums. Perfect. Well done, guys. So now I want to give you a bit of a challenge. And miss, this is a challenge for you as well. Okay. I'm not going to tell you what call I'm going to do first, but you need to respond with the correct one. Okay. So remember, if I say... We love djembe's, you respond with djembe drum, djembe drum. If I say we play the djembe's, you would respond with we play the drums. Okay, this is quite tricky. Let's see how many of you can get it correct. I'll play along too. So if you go wrong, at least I'm playing. And if I go wrong, at least you're having a go too. Right, let's give it a go. So we play the djembe's. We play the drums. We play the djembe's. We play the drums. We love djembe's. We did it! Well right. done! I'm going to see if we can go a little bit quicker though. Let's see if we're able to do this a little bit quicker. Are we up to the challenge? Right. I hope you're still playing along on your desks, on your laps, or clapping along. Right, are you ready, miss? Ready. We play the gem bass. We play the drums. We play the gem bass. We play the drums. We love gem bass. Gem bass drums, gem bass drums. We love gem bass. Gem bass drums, gem bass drums. We play the gem bass. We play the drums. We love gem managed to get all of them. If you did, well done, that's brilliant. The second worksheet has sentences on it relating to the djembe. See if you can fill in the blanks on those using the words at the bottom of the page. The third worksheet is questions all about how the djembe is made, so I hope you're watching that video closely. Do you think you can answer the questions to create a description of how a djembe is created? If you manage to finish all of those, there's a fourth worksheet you can do, which is all about designing your very own djembe drum. So let's say you wanted to create a pattern at the bottom of your djembe drum for your local town or city. What would you come up with and what would your djembe look like? Good luck everybody and remember, if you need help with any of the worksheets, go backwards in this video to review any of the things we've spoken about previously. Hi everyone, we really hope you enjoyed our lessons all about African drumming. If you wanted African drumming lessons in your school, we would bring all of the drums that you see here as well as an instructor to deliver the lessons. It doesn't matter if you're in EYFS, Key Stage 1 or Key Stage 2, there would be a lesson for you. Every lesson, we would give you a learning objective or a WALT so that you knew exactly what you were doing in your lesson and, more importantly, you knew if you'd achieved something in your lessons. Now, our African drumming course lasts for seven weeks. So if your teacher's not in the class during that, you might wonder how they know how you're getting on. Well, all of our instructors, after every single lesson, fill out what we call a session form, which goes onto our website. Your teachers will be able to access those session forms via our online portal so they can see exactly what you've been doing every single week. 
If this is something that you've really enjoyed and you would like Junior Jam to be in your school, comment on the video below and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Bye everyone! See you later!